Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption draws nigh. Welcome, my friends, to another LHB Last Days Update, Wolf Watch Edition. Is God your number two? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at Jesse Duplantis, who says that God can be your number two in agreement. Now, he takes Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, out of context, and I'll read it to you real quick. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, we're going to take a look at this clip from Jesse Duplantis, and then we'll come back and see if that verse is really saying what he says it's saying. Roll it. Book of Matthew, chapter 18. Verse, I'm going to start reading verse probably first 18, first 19 and 20. But before I do that, I was praying the other day to the Lord. And it was one of the amazing things. I was just talking because, you know, people ask me all the time because my hair is so white. But Jesse, when are you going to slow down or, or when are you going to retire? L- let me make this announcement so everybody will know. When God quits giving me projects. He's always telling me to do something, you know, and he's giving me the strength and the physical strength to handle it, as well as the moral strength, as well as the financial strength to do those things. But I was just talking to him about so many different uh, projects because we have multi-million dollar ongoing projects at all time. It's always something God's wanting to do in the world. You know, what I mean, somewhere, somehow. And I was talking like this and I said, and all of a sudden, Matthew 18, 19, that if two of you shall agree, I said, you know, Lord, you said in Matthew 18, 19, two of you, you shall agree. And the Lord interrupted me. He said, I'll be you too. I said, what'd you say? He said, I'll be you too. I said, what do you mean be my two? See, all you've got to do is get somebody to believe with you. So many people looking for so thousands of people. Now, it's nice to have thousands of people believing with you, but all you need is one. You already got God. He's your two. And, and if you got me, I'm your three. If you got your sister, your brother, brother, four, five, your name, whatever, I'll be you too. When he said that, that struck me, and I want to talk about that today. And the title of this sermon is this, I'll be you too. How many of y'all believe in God for something? Hold your hand up. I'll be you too. I don't care if it's spiritual, physical, or financial. You understand what I'm saying? It don't make no difference to me what you believe in for. See, but I've got to do something if I'm going to be you too, and we're going to talk about that. In Matthew chapter 18, I want to start reading with verse, uh, verse 18. Jesus is talking. This is the red letter edition Bible. He says this, For verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Everyone look at me. You are working on two different planets at one time. You have the power to bind here on the earth. You have the power to bind in heaven. You don't realize the power of attorney of the name of Jesus. When you speak the name of Jesus, everything on the earth, above the earth, below the earth bows. So you have the power to bind something on the planet heaven, just like you got the power to bind something on the planet earth. Somebody shout, bless God. Do you understand that? Now, if you have that kind of power, you don't have no problems. All you need is faith in God. That's Brother R. W. Shambach's wonderful statement many, many years ago. So let me read verse 18 again. He says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now watch this. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the ability to bind and to loose is not only here. Let me say it again. It's also in heaven. (laughs) As you can see, Jesse has a lot to say. You know, the word of faith crowd is wacky like that. All right. Number one, they believe that heaven is a planet. And they believe that earth is a replica of that planet. Now, there's nowhere in scripture that you're going to see that heaven's a planet. We don't know what heaven looks like, okay? And it definitely doesn't say, the scriptures don't say that it's a planet. You have to read that into the scriptures, eisegesis, right? And you're supposed to be, instead of eisegesizing the scriptures, you're supposed to be exegesing the scriptures, meaning let the scriptures speak for itself, not reading your own opinions into the scriptures. Now, he goes to Matthew 18 to try to prove his point. And remember, context is important. So if we scroll up to verse 15, 
in Matthew chapter 18, it says this, and I'll read the whole thing all the way down, and you'll under, you'll get a better picture of what this passage is really talking about. It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So now we see that it's talking about a brother trespassing or sinning against another brother. Verse 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Okay, now, you know, it's telling you what to do in the next phase of this disciplinary action. Verse 17, and if he shall neglect to hear him, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Here goes the verse that, Jesse was quoting, verily I say unto you, and by the way, when you see the word verily in the uh, King James Version, it just means truly, okay? Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, what does that mean? It simply means whatsoever you agree upon on earth, okay, concerning the discipline of of a uh, wayward brother that refuses to repent. He's still a brother, but we are to now, after following God's outline for discipline, if he rejects all of that, okay, God will agree with our decision on earth based on this disciplinary action. It, mean, it doesn't mean that if I agree with you to get, uh, get a Porsche, uh, that you're going to get a Porsche. <laughs> it doesn't mean that if we agree that, you know, you're going to be healed from your sickness, that you're going to be healed from your sickness. It doesn't mean that. See, what Jesse's doing, he's taking the scripture out of context. This is all about church discipline. Now, you know, of course, you know, it says in verse 20 where two or three are gathered there uh, together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And of course, you know, God is in the midst of the church. It's, it shows that in Revelation, he's in the midst of, uh, you know, if two brothers are even, uh, you know, congregating in a building, Jesus Christ is there. And, 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 you know, that's what it's talking about too. But the main purpose of this passage was church discipline. And that when you follow these procedures and you've done all of this, God will agree in heaven with your decision here on earth because you followed the proper outline that he gave to try to correct a brother or sister in the Lord. Jesse wants this verse to be like a magic lantern that you rub and you get your wish as long as you can find one. And another thing that got me a little bit heated here is that he made God number two. I thought God was supposed to be number one. He says, God told him, <laughs> again, these Word of Faith guys, they hear from God every day, every second, apparently, um, audibly, and, and they have this casual conversation, you know, God interrupted him, you know, like, how dare God do that, and said, I'll be your number two, Jesse. <laughs> what? <laughs> what God are you talking about? Because the God of heaven, uh, you know, does not need us. And is not going to sit there and say, I'll be your number two. I'll be your backup. Here's the thing. God is holy and just. And we need to keep that in mind. He's not your regular Joe Schmo at the local bar that you talk to like that. We got to be very reverent. You know, you're talking about the, the creator of the universe. And these Word of Faith guys and NAR guys, they, they talk to God like he's just a regular guy down the block. Okay, guys, I just wanted to go ahead and um, do this short video on Jesse Duplantis and his uh, unscriptural take on scripture. And don't forget, you know, if you guys are new to our channel, just subscribe, share the video, like the video, hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. Okay, if you decide to get any of our merch, the link is in the description box below. And until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws nigh. Maranatha.